Communication has, by and large, been the key for the development of humanity. From the creation of early languages to the eventual invention of pen and ink, humans' ability to communicate with one another and share thoughts and ideas has largely been responsible for their progress as the dominant species on Earth. This key, however, is also able to be used in a more malicious sense. To open more malicious doors. For every truth told or every document written, there is an equal amount of lies brought forth. The best demonstration of this misuse of one of humanity's greatest tools is visible through the actions of Imperial Japan as the Empire of the Rising Sun declares war on the Allies and joins the Axis as World War II begins. During World War II, the expansion of the Japanese Empire led to the integration of many different peoples. In order to maintain their stability, the Empire of Japan utilized multiple forms of propaganda, both to incorporate the newly captured states into Japan and to bolster support for their war effort against the Allies. The government's propaganda, their choice of communication to citizens, was typically conveyed through three mediums. film newspapers, and kamishibai. Films were the main and most effective method of propaganda the Japanese used. The film law of 1939 allowed them to abolish films that they deemed frivolous. Films that contained any social, sexual, or any government deemed inappropriate content were immediately banned. Instead, the government promoted the use of films to elevate the national consciousness. As a matter of fact, the very first things that we built in newly conquered territories were theaters. Many such theaters were propped up on the Chinese mainland as Japan attempted to get their propaganda films playing to placate the Chinese public as soon as possible. By 1945, their film propaganda had expanded from Japan, Shanghai, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Indonesia. However, Films were most effective to the foreign, far-away members of the Japanese Empire. Their own citizens, for those closer to the mainland, Japan preferred the use of newspapers. Anti-fascist newspapers that existed before the 1940s were purged by the fascist government. Instead, a few newspapers existed who promoted the Japanese Empire extensively. The newspapers published daily, where during the war, their headlines were flooded with page after page of helicopters, soldiers, and battleships, with glorifications of the kamikaze, or the divine wind, who paid the ultimate sacrifice for their honor and the honor of Japan. Newspapers like Kaijo Nippo, who assisted the government's propaganda campaign, became some of Japan's largest newspaper companies before ultimately being shut down after the Japanese lost the war. They would contain large headlines, lying about Japan's success, political cartoons, undermining the Allies, and inspiring stories about heroes whose truth we can never confirm. However, the propaganda did not stop there. Films and newspapers would only reach the upper Akelions of society. The average Japanese person was not literate, nor, would he, nor was he able to read from a newspaper. And so the average Japanese fisherman or farmer would never be able to see or understand the war if these were the only two pieces of propaganda that they presented. The third, and arguably most genius form of communicating their message, was the kamishibai. Kamishibai directly translates to paper drama, and is a form of propaganda purely unique to Japan. Kamishibai was being used to propagate messages and ideologies to the Jap that the Japanese government encouraged. Entrancing stories would capture the attention of both children and adults in both the mainland as well as Japanese-occupied regions. Heroic depictions of sacrifice, adventure, honor, 
and nationalism were all central events to Kamishibai propaganda during the Second World War. It was this, these lies, these false hopes, that, that caused so many regular Japanese people to join the Japanese army and fight for honor. So many farmers, peasants, untrained men and women attempting to fight for their country who had been spewing nothing but lies to them. All three forms of propaganda shared similar themes, mainly including nationalism and sacrifice. The pride of the Japanese, the ones who belong to the empire of the rising sun. Propaganda films and newspapers often plucked at the heartstrings of the Japanese, calling for them to rise up in the name of their mothers, their fathers, and their countries calling upon the honor of all those who deem themselves Japanese. The propaganda told them that they were soldiers, convinced them they were warriors, and reminded them of the great Japanese samurai. It called upon the soldiers to rage, called upon them to fight, and it called upon them to die. All of it for a lie. They were called as the defense to defend the great nation of Japan, when in reality, it was they who served as the tip of Japan's spear as she rushed to conquer East Asia. The words carried enough power in them to cause millions to die. The words of the propaganda artists, their drawings, their films, their newspapers, were enough to rip men away from their wives to rip sons from their mothers and everything in between. The correct and proper use of communication can lead to the build-up of entire civilizations. It can lead to the creation of great nation-states. It leads to the prosperity and democracy that we can see today. However, something so powerful, yet so fragile, is also easy to abuse. And the abuse of communication, humanity's strongest asset, could lead to millions losing their lives. Propaganda is one of humanity's strongest weapons, because individually we are some of the weakest creatures on earth. But it's our ability to communicate, our ability to share thoughts and desires, to come together and reach an understanding that allows us to be great and dominate this world. It's what allows us to build skyscrapers, to dam mighty rivers, and build planes of metal that soar through the skies. Propaganda in any war is this blurring of fact from fiction. It's the calling of people to fight for something they may not even believe in. The lies that nations tell those at home. So that those at home continue to support the leaders in charge regardless of what they are doing. Japanese propaganda in World War II, in its many forms, through its many themes, was a severe abuse of communication, causing millions to lose their lives fighting for an honor they should never have been misguided to believe in. And it is through communication now that we are able to learn of their stories, their mistakes, and grow as a species.